and welcome to another edition of the Artcast. I'm your host, Art Shimko. It's from May 12th, 2020. It's episode 8. We're going to be talking about the Philadelphia Eagles 2020 NFL schedule. That's right, folks. The NFL released their schedule last Thursday evening. And uh, in this time of certainty, it brought a lot of hope for us sports fans and us football fans who are yearning for some type of sport to commence you know, while trying to understand that things are going to take a while due to the whole worldwide pandemic and uh, postponing a lot of schedules, pushing a lot of things till next year. Not knowing if people even want to come out to gatherings. You know, if any kind of uh, ban is lifted and people can go to gatherings, you know, they'll allow what, maybe 10% of full capacity of a venue, so it could be fewer than a couple thousand, hundreds, close to a thousand, but then you gotta space them out, spread them out throughout the venue. Who knows what that's going to be like. Uh, in football, I mean, they were talking about maybe, I mean, maybe they'll play in uh, empty stadiums. And then uh, they'll rely on the TV audience and the ratings more than ever. You know, the, the ratings are high. But is it going to be compelling to watch football without an audience? I mean, I've watched some wrestling without an audience, and after a while, I mean, you know, they're doing the best they can with what they have and don't have, but I don't know. It it comes off still kind of weird. You know, uh, Major League Baseball was discussing similar things with uh, holding their games in an empty stadium in either Arizona or Florida, or was it both maybe? I thought it was maybe one or the other. You know, they would uh, quarantine the players in one hotel. They'd all be in one city. And uh, they'd play, Go, you know, they'd go to the stadium downtown and play there without an audience. But who knows? I mean, there's not even any kind of date when MLB will start. And the only sport that's starting up now is NASCAR they're starting up next week on the 17th, I think. And they're going to be racing in empty grandstands and raceways so but that'll be the only other sport that's active for now until we see how the other leagues respond so but nonetheless it's encouraging and fun to have the schedule because you get to see you know uh, what's going on with your teams you know, who are they going to be playing? You know, is it how different is it from last year? You know, this year the Eagles are getting uh, NFC West and AFC North, two tough divisions, and uh, a few other teams sprinkled in along the way, along with the division rivals. So uh, let's uh, start off with it. Let's uh, start with the preseason, which is uh, four games like always. Uh, The first three dates are tentative. They're giving a a date between this date and that date. Um, The first uh, first two games, first two preseason games are on the road. First one is between August 13th and the 17th, and it's going to be in Indianapolis against the Colts. Uh, All the times are to be determined, and all the games, all the preseason games will be broadcast in Philadelphia and the Delaware Valley, New Jersey, Delaware, locally on NBC 10. Um, so yeah, the first road game is against the Colts. Second one is uh, between uh, the 20th and the 24th of August at Miami against the Dolphins. As you remember, uh, Dolphins clobbered the Eagles last year during the regular season. A team that had won like two games previously all season up until that point. And uh, 
don't know if the Eagles took them lightly or what was going down. I mean, we had a lot of injuries too, so the team was adjusting. But, you know, a game that a lot of people thought the team could easily win turned out to be an abysmal loss. So that could be a fun little revenge game, even if all the starters aren't going to be in that game. But, you know, it'll still be fun little drama, I'm sure. Uh, August 27th to the 30th, between those times, uh, New England Patriots will be in town. And uh, third that third game, I think they uh, play the starters for like three like you know three quarters of the game, maybe if not half the game. It's gonna be interesting to have a Patriots team without Brady under under center, even without Gronkowski, even though he's been retired already. Or, Semi-retired, whatever it is, because now he's back with uh, with uh, Brady in Tampa Bay. So um, <clears throat> I've seen a preseason game before with uh, the Patriots and the Eagles. It was uh, the first game of the preseason back in 2010. And uh, the interesting thing with that game was that was the night that uh, everyone found out that Michael Vick had signed with the Eagles... There were people at the game that were getting ESPN text alerts or from wherever sports, you know, uh, site they follow. And, yeah, it produced an interesting, weird vibe in the stadium that night. You know, a lot of people were, you know, going on over the whole signing. You know, some people were like, yeah, that's great. And there are other people that were like, holy shit, we were, we're the ones that signed this guy? So... That was that was in, that was interesting, but I, I I don't even think people were really paying attention much to the game at that point. Anyway, I mean, like I said, it was the first game of the preseason already, so I feel like Brady played in that game though a bit for some reason. I I, I feel like I I thought I saw him even if it was for like a like a series or whatever, but you know, it sounds like something Belichick would do, right? So and um. Last preseason game, it's actually has it's actually has a, a scheduled date. It's a Thursday, September third. New York Jets, they'll be in town. Um, that's always the last game of the season. That's always the New England and uh, and uh, the Jets. They're always like preseason staples for the team, and the, the Jets they always seem to play that last game, and it's always the first Thursday in September. And I again, I'd been to. A preseason game, so I remember seeing the Jets play before, and I'm pretty sure that the Eagles beat them that game. So uh, let's get on to the regular season here. Um, starting off Sunday, September 13th. Uh, it's a road game. It's uh, in Washington against the Redskins, 1 p.m. on Fox. All these times are Eastern Standard Time, or Eastern Daylight Time, I should say. But um, Redskins... Really not much to say about them. You know, they're a shit team. They're a shit owner. You know, they're always a hot mess on, on feet. So, you know, I mean, they've, they've beaten the Eagles. Uh, you know, there were there was like a, there's been a first week. There's been a week one game or two where the Redskins have won. But usually, you know, the, the, the Eagles clobber them. And I'm sure they'll clobber them. On the 13th of September. I'm not going to do win-loss for like all the games, but Redskins is a game I'm pretty, I'm pretty confident that the Eagles can win because, as I said, the Redskins, they're, they're, just, they're just shit. So, uh, um, the next week, sun, uh, Sunday, September 20th, LA Rams are in town. Again, uh, 1 p.m. on Fox. Um, you know, they, uh, they were in the Super Bowl a couple years ago. Against uh, New England, they got clobbered by New England. They're a new, te- they're still you know fairly young team. You know it's a young, it's a young franchise. You know they're uh, trying to build up a fan base in LA. <clears throat> you know maybe they're trying to get some old fans, but also building up a newer band fan base and such. And it's a good young team. You know they they have a lot of potential. Uh, if you remember. You know, Eagles played there a few years ago, and that's when uh, Carson Wentz was going for uh, the touchdown, flew across the end zone, and uh, the two defend two defenders like rammed rammed right into his knees, and there went his ACL, and you know, and then Nick Foles took the team to the Super Bowl and won. So, so that's a little 
interesting there. You know, Carson will be the plain air the second week. It'll be cool to see uh, Carson up against that team. You know, uh, fairly young quarterbacks playing against each other again. That'll be a good matchup. Um, Sunday, September 27th, 1 p.m. on CBS. Uh, Cincinnati Bengals are in town. And uh, that's an interesting team right there, too, because they, uh, you know, they sent Andy Dalton packing. And now he's with uh, now he's with the Dallas backing up. Uh, is with the Dallas Cowboys backing up Dak Prescott. And uh, Cincinnati, they uh, drafted their, uh, their top draft pick, Joe Burrow, a champion quarterback from uh, LSU. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be his first year in the league. He's got uh, these weapons like AJ Green and Joe Mixon and John Ross, Tyler Boyd, Mike Thomas. You know, see how he uh, responds with those guys. They're fairly young. You know, they got a they they got a couple years or so under their belt. So uh, a few years even. You know, uh, AJ Green. You know, been there quite quite a good amount of time and such. So. Um, you know, we'll see how he uh, connects with those guys who've been at it for a while. And, um, you know, that, that ought to be another good game. You know, another young quarterback who's coming to town. And uh, see how Carson and the defense plays against him. Um, first game in October, Sunday, October 4th. It's uh, actually the first, it's the first of, uh, I think, four night games for the Eagles. Uh, it's a Sunday night football in San Francisco against the 49ers, 8-20 on uh, NBC. And, uh, you know, Jimmy G and the boys coming off their loss in the Super Bowl against Kansas City. You know, Super Bowl, that looked like they were going to win. You know, the first half they were, you know, pretty dominant in the game. And uh, then there's Patrick Mahomes, who's cool as a cucumber, just uh Brought the team back and ended up winning the Super Bowl. So we'll see how San Francisco bounces back. And it's also going to be another interesting thing is, uh, you know, we got uh, their we got their great wide receiver Marquise Goodwin through a six round trade when um, the Eagles swap picks with the Niners, and uh, he was part of the deal. So exciting to have him another. Receiving weapon for uh, Carson there, and uh, yeah, well, you know, West Coast trip, you know, should be uh, should be interesting, but uh, should be a fun game, you know, night game and stuff. It'll be late afternoon, evening when they're starting there, but uh, that'll be uh, cool for their second road game. Um, Sunday, October eleventh, uh, another road game. They're uh, in Pittsburgh playing the Steelers one uh, one p.m. on Fox. You know, you got uh, Big Ben out there, still lumbering out there on Heinz Field. He's going to have a whole crew, new crew, different crew of, uh, well, maybe not different, but, uh, you know, he's going to have other receiving weapons to to go to, whatever. And uh, Mike Tomlin, is he, uh, is this his last year? Uh, you know, I thought I heard a little bit that. He might be on a chopping block last season, but you know, I think he's still a good coach if uh, the team responds to him well, you know. But if it's a shit season, then, yeah, he he could be getting his walking papers soon enough. But um, that's always a good game. I always like watching uh, Eagles and Steelers. It's like a rough tumble, rough and tumble game. You know, t- two tough defenses and, you know, the offenses are really high flying and such, so... That'll be a good one. Following week, Sunday, September 18th, uh, another tough game. It's back-to-back. Uh, the Ravens are coming to town. You know, and uh, you got Lamar Jackson coming off his amazing season. Robert Griffin the third, backing him up. You know, we'll see how uh, that's all be another tough game. And um, see, I said at 1 p.m. on CBS. Yeah, that that's all. That's gonna be another great matchup. Uh, Thursday, October twenty second. It's uh, their second 
night game. Thursday night football on Fox and NFL Network against uh, the Giants who are coming to town, 8.20 p.m. You know, it's another young team coming t- into uh, their own. The way they have, uh, they have uh, head coach Joe Judge. Oh, is that his first season? Is this his first season? I'm not sure. I'm not sure who coached last season. If, uh, if you can help me out, you know, if you want, uh, write in the comments if uh, Joe Judge, if this is his first year or not. I'm not really sure. But, you know, you got you got the young crew there. You got uh, Daniel, J- Daniel Jones and uh, Saquon Barkley and Darius Slayton, Evan Ingram, Kyler Fackrell. Uh, Jane, and on defense, you have guys like James Bradbury, Blake Martinez, Leonard Williams. You know, young team there. You know, they're they're you know developing still. You know, who knows what they're going to be like this year? I don't know of any kind of analysis. I haven't really seen any kind of analysis because I don't follow them like that. But you know, we'll see how the Giants are. You know, maybe not a team to be taken lightly, but. Again, who knows what that? I mean, there's don't really have any kind of projection of how they're going to be or, you know, what their expectations are. But um, uh, following week, the first game in November, Sunday, November first, our beloved friends, the Dallas Cowboys, are going to be in town, eight twenty p.m. NBC for another Sunday night game, and uh, yeah, Dallas they have a new head coach and Mike McCarthy. And uh, we'll see how Dak and Amari and Zeke and all those guys respond his coaching. You know, is uh, is, is uh, Jerry going to meddle or is he going to leave him be? Maybe maybe his son Steven will be like, hey, Dad, just fucking let him do his thing. You know, this is not, you know, the Jason Garrett era is over. The hand clapping is done. You know, you know, you need to put your hand hand up his puppet ass <laughs> to see how McCarthy responds you know with the with the with the with the team and with the, how his new ball getting along with his new bosses we'll see how that goes but you know you feel like Jerry's getting serious again and it's like okay you know I need a guy that's going to be totally in charge and know what he's doing and you know, he's won a Super Bowl and such and you know Coached all those years in Green Bay, so he's got a good pedigree. You know, at Dallas, it's a, the you know the first of two Dallas weeks in Philadelphia. Those are always fun. Those are exciting. The radio talk radio is always hilarious. <laughs> hearing, hearing everybody going off on Dallas. So um, Sunday, November eighth is a bye week. Um, Sunday, November fifteenth, they come back. Uh, they go back up. They go up to New York to MetLife Stadium. Play the Giants at 1 p.m. on Fox. Following week, November 22nd, Sunday, they're traveling to Cleveland to play the Browns. You know, the Browns have a whole transition there. I mean, you still have guys like, you know, Baker and Odell and Miles and Kareem and Jarvis and all those dudes. And uh, they have a new head coach in Kevin Stefanski. New GM and Andrew Berry. See how that goes. You know, two years ago, Cleveland, you know, they they improved immensely and it was like, whoa, these guys, you know, they know that they're being serious, you know, they have to be serious about this and it looks like they're really, you know, taking charge of things and doing well. And then last year, you know, they get Odell and they just plummeted, man. Like, you know, they 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 just fell apart and you know, they 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 were making all sorts of you know shit mistakes and stuff and uh you know and then there's uh, you know the, there's the, the reports of Odell on the sidelines yelling at the other teammates you know sign me sign me tell your team to sign me you know and then of course you know Miles Garrett and uh you know the kid that kid Rudolph you know the quarterback for Pittsburgh you know that whole thing with the uh, bonking him on the head with a helmet you know when he t- with his helmet off his you know <laughs> not wearing a helmet and all that shit you know, the head coach wearing that shirt that said, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pittsburgh started it. Oh, my daughter gave it to me. Oh, well, that's great, but don't wear it in public, dude. Like, you're a fucking head coach of an NFL team. You can't be, you know, again, this is in WWE, you know. Like, you're not 
supposed to be really doing that kind of thing, you know? Like, fans kind of look down on that, and everybody looked down upon it and be like, dude, like, what the fuck are you doing? So, but anyway, you know, that, that ought to, again, it'll be an interesting game, you know? Uh, Browns fans and uh, Eagles fans kind of have a similar trait, you know, b- both blue collar based fan bases that, you know, like to see their teams, you know, fight hard and what bring their lunch pail to work and all that kind of, you know, mucking and grinding. I know it's probably like hockey terminology, but you know what I mean? That kind of thing where they just want to see their players play hard, you know, even if you lose, you've pl- you played hard and hardest and put your damnedest effort into it. So. You know that 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 should that should be a good game. I mean, depending on how where Cleveland is at at, the, at that point in the season. I mean, if you know if they're if they're even, you know, but even if they're like, you know, even if they've only like won two or three games at that point, you know, you maybe don't still want to take them lightly. That might be the game where they're like they win that game too. You know, so so that's gonna be an interesting one. And then uh, let's see here. Got a few more games left. Monday the thirtieth, in the the last uh, last night game, primetime game for the Eagles. It's uh, Monday the thirtieth. Seahawks are in town. Uh, Eight fifteen the ESPN Monday Night Football. Uh, Seahawks, you know, uh, coming off that win against the Eagles in the playoffs last year. Uh, Jadavian Clowney took out. Carson, early in the game, it was like a helmet-to-helmet kind of thing or whatever. You know, Carson had to leave for concussion issues and such. And that put a major sour taste in the mouths of uh, Philadelphia Eagles fans everywhere. You know, you got uh, you got Russell Wilson and Greg Olson and Tyler Lockett and all those dudes there and stuff. And uh, so, but Clowney is not with the team. He is a free agent and... Um, you know, there's teams that are interested, and one of the teams brought up was uh, was the Eagles, you know, for him to sign with. And, you know, the hilarious part with that was the fan base getting all, the fill, the Eagles fan base getting all up in arms, you know. Like, there's a portion of them that were like, no fucking way, you can't f- sign that fucking guy, man. He took Carson out, man. He's his dirty player, and he's, uh, and, and it's going to be so awkward and weird, and, uh, and, 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 and you know they, they they asked Carson what he thought and he was like he said he held no grudges and he thought it'd be great to have a player like that on the team it's like you know he, he wants the team to win like you want the best players on your team man like it, it, it's it's just uh you know i mean that kind of mentality is just it's like almost like pro wrestling fan mentality like you know, like, like, you know, oh, we can't sign that guy because he was a cowboy. Or we can't sign this guy because he was on this other team. It's just like, it's, you know, it, when he signed someone who had, like, a criminal past or even, like, involved, he, that's something where he could be like, oh, man, like, we're signing that guy? Like, what the fuck? But when it's, you know, when it, when it, when it's, you know, someone like that, I mean, if they sign Clowney, I think it'd be great. He's a great fucking player. You know, I think he still has... You know, has has enough of him to 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 play well, and having him on a defense like holy shit, man! Like you'd be you'd be happy, you know. You you'd, you'd see him make plays, and you'd be like, all right, I'm glad I have him, you know, on the team. I forgot all this stuff about you know what he did with 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 Carson, you know, especially if they go deep into the playoffs. I know I'm thinking way far ahead there, but you know that that's just you know how that goes uh first game in in uh December December 6th Sunday 425 on CBS teams going to Green Bay to play the Packers and uh that's interesting there too you know they the Packers drafted a young quarterback and that caught people off guard including Aaron Rodgers I'm sure you know is he going to mentor the kid put him under his wing you know or is it going to be like a Favre type situation where you know it's like oh kid I'm not doing that you know i'm the man you know like aaron might have that mentality too who knows like oh i'm still the man so why am i gonna show this kid but you know i mean at the same time you know you don't want to think about the fact you can get hurt but shit's gonna happen so regardless you know i mean the kid should get some kind of pointers and we'll see how that goes but man december 6th in green bay 
it's going to be six degrees, <laughs> maybe negative six degrees, you know, it's, but if they get a win there, that'd be great, man. I remember, I'm pretty sure Foles was, uh, was starting very, like, like recently in like the last couple of years. And, um, I thought that he had beat the team in Lambeau or maybe it was when he was, maybe it might've been during his earlier stint. I, I should have looked that up, but I know that there was a game that uh, the Eagles had won in Lambeau. And it's like, that's like one of the places where it's like such a sweet, that's a sweet win when you could win a game at Lambeau Field, you know, it, it's like just one of those sacred hollowed grounds that, you know, that they just do so well on. It's, it's a home field advantage for sure. So, um, especially when you have, you know, the fans who are also investors in the team sit, you know, and, and, uh, backing you up and, and cheering and such. So, um, Sunday, December 13th, 425 on Fox, uh, the New Orleans Saints are in town and, uh, Drew Brees, he's back on the team. You know, there was, uh, there was wondering if he was going to be signed to the team again or what was going to happen with him, but. He's uh he's back in the Saints and uh, he's Mr. New Orleans. I mean, you know, his career got reinvigorated there and he helped the city heal and reinvigorate itself. You know, after Katrina, then they won a Super Bowl. I mean, I was at a bar down there, you know, a couple years ago and I remember seeing this uh like this painted painted portrait or whatever of Jesus Christ and Drew Brees' face was superimposed, or like pasted, like right on Jesus' face. It was, I was like, that, that's, 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 that's how they see him, you know? He's this, he was, he's like the savior down there, you know? It's like weird to see Tom Brady leave Tom, uh, New England after 20 years and he's going to be in a different uniform. It'd be the same way with Brees, even though he was with, you know, he had a, he had a pretty good stint in San Diego prior to his shoulder injury. So uh, that's going to be a great game, you know? Saints are in town. You know, again, you know, you think about the game where uh, during the playoffs when at the dome when uh, Foles threw that pass and uh, to Jeffrey and he misses it, goes right through his hands, gets intercepted. You know, not not that much time left, and you know they were in the lead by like six points. You know, New Orleans goes on to the to the playoffs, so you know that's that's a storyline right there. So that'll be a fun game to watch. Uh, Sunday, December 20th, 4.05 Fox. Uh, uh, one of two last uh, road trips. Eagles got to Arizona to play the Cardinals. I'm not sure how that team is. You know, I know Fitzgerald is still on the team. I'm not sure who the quarterback is or the coach. But uh, another West Coast game, you know, uh, no, it's a game that, you know, you don't want to take lightly, even though it's going to the Cardinals. Some people would be like, oh, it's the Cardinals, just like they would say, oh, it's the Browns or it's, you know, Cincinnati. The only attitude I have about that is those Redskins, because I know for a fact that the Redskins are a shit team. So <laughs> that can get lucky sometimes, you know, any given Sunday. But, um, yeah, that'll that'll be a, that'll be a great matchup. Uh, Sunday, December 27th, 425 Fox. Uh, Eagles travel down here to Texas to play the Cowboys. Uh, four hours north of here in Dallas. And, uh, yeah, you know, Dallas week, that's fun, especially during that time. You know, Christmas in Philly, you know, it's like between Christmas and New Year's in Philly and very festive time, you know, lots of parties and stuff and, and, and just hanging out. And then you got Dallas week, so that's exciting. And then the last game of the season, Sunday, January 3rd, uh, Redskins come to town, 1 p.m. Fox. You know what I said earlier about the Redskins? Fuck them. <laughs> they'll win those. They'll win. I, I, you know, usually they, they split the games, you know, something with those guys sometimes. But I feel like they're going to beat them both. They're going to sweep, sweep them in the season. So uh, let's see some quick postseason notes here. Uh, Saturday, January 9th and Sunday, January 10th, AFC and NFC wildcard playoffs. Saturday, January 16th, and Sunday, January 17th, AFC and NFC Divisional Playoffs. Sunday, January 24th, AFC and NFC Championship Games. And then the season concludes on Sunday, February 7th, with Super Bowl 55 at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. That will be on CBS. So there you have it. The... To the 2020 Philadelphia Eagles, 
National Football League schedule. I'm excited for it. You know, I hope, uh, I'm hoping there's a season of some sort. You know, even if they're going to play, you know, in empty stadiums. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be really, really, really interesting. Now, my friend Scott had this interesting idea, a really cool idea, where he said that, uh, you know, the people watching from home, you know, like, I don't know, like if they're watching on a computer, you know, you have the, you have the computer, you have the, your uh, laptop mic or whatever. And, you know, if you cheer into it, maybe like enough of it, you can get like a big crowd cheer <laughs> at a stadium because, you know, you don't want to like pipe in, you know, like fake cheers or whatever. That's just going to be so strange, right? But hey, this, this, the pandemic has made everything strange. You know, you have to rethink a lot of things through now. But um, again, getting the NFL schedule, it's like a sign of hope. You know, if football doesn't run this year, then you know shit's really serious. You know, I mean, when sports stop running, you know, you would, I mean, before you'd always think like, man, you know, sports, sports still goes on. Like if sports stops and something's really fucked, you know, sports stopped. And now, you know, NFL, they're, they're like just going along their schedule like normal. I mean, I don't know who knows when OTAs are going to start or like what's going on there. I guess I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I haven't heard any kind of thing with that going on. So um, we'll see how all of this pans out. But it's nice to look at the schedule. I'm happy with the schedule. You know, I, I, I think it'll, you know. It's going to be a really exciting season, none of the less. And uh, we'll see where it goes. And also, um, I'm going to wrap the show up. Thank you all again for uh, listening to the Art Cast. Appreciate your feedback. You know, leave, uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think of this episode. And uh, who your team is. And uh, if you're excited for your team schedule and such so um y'all take care and i will see you soon